New York City, gateway to North America. Today, the financial capital of the world. Population, eight million people. In 1776, this is a city of just 20,000. It will soon become the battleground for the biggest land invasion in American history. Three miles from Wall Street, where 23rd Street crosses Lexington Avenue today, the rebels dig in to defend New York at Kipps Bay. Commander of the rebel army is General George Washington. He has already driven the British out of Boston. A surprise victory against superior forces. But they'll be back. The hour is fast approaching on which the honor and success of this army and the safety of our bleeding country depend. Joseph Plum Martin enlisted in the rebel forces at 15, inspired to fight under Washington's command. A farm boy, he joins thousands of untrained volunteers. Our Revolutionary Army was, was quite something. It was in a nation that wasn't really a nation yet, just starting out. And we took on the, the greatest superpower of, of the time. Washington's ragtag troops are about to face the best equipped and most powerful fighting force in the world. June 29th, 45 British warships mass off Staten Island. Bearing down on New York City, the ultimate war machine of its day, the British ship of the line. Each ship is made from over 2,000 century-old trees. Each carries hundreds more soldiers to the fight against the colonies. And each is armed with up to 64 heavy cannons. Well! Capable of hurling a 24-pound cannonball at the speed of sound, delivering it to targets over a mile away. One ship of the line cost the equivalent of a modern aircraft carrier. Another 350 British ships are racing across the Atlantic to join them. The British want to terrify the rebels into submission. On July 12th, two British warships open fire on New York City. Must have been quite a shock because New York up to that point was a pretty quiet city. It was a business city. So you had significant support for the rebels, but also significant support for the people who were still loyal to the king. A month later, Joseph Reed, secretary to George Washington, tracks the British fleet massing off New York. Over 400 ships, the largest British naval task force until D-Day. 
32,000 British troops prepare to storm Manhattan Island. They outnumber Patriot forces two to one. Just five of the biggest British ships carry more firepower than all the Patriot guns in the city. Reed is awed by the sight. When I look down and see the prodigious fleet they have collected, I cannot help being astonished that a people should come 3,000 miles at such risk, trouble, and expense to rob, plunder, and destroy another people because they will not lay their lives and fortune at their feet. It's the biggest attack on New York City until September 11, 2001. But the rebels will stand and fight. The difference for me was that uh, the British Army was fighting for a king. The Americans were fighting for their lives. Plum Martin is one of 500 men standing guard at Kipps Bay. Have a look. The first thing that saluted her eyes was all four ships at anchor, within musket shot of us. The Phoenix. I could read her name as distinctly as though I was directly underneath her stern. The assault begins. September 1776. New York is under fire. One hour, two and a half thousand British cannonballs smashed the rebel defenses at Kipps Bay. Four thousand British troops storm Manhattan. Tough and battle hardened, a British redcoat has six times more combat experience than a Patriot Army recruit. Get back in your lines! Washington watches his army collapse. Hold the lines, men! They retreat along an ancient Native American path that will later be known as Broadway. September 20th, New York, now in British hands, burns. No one knows who starts the fire. But over two days, it destroys a quarter of the city. gives you a sense of the people who wanted to be free, how much they were willing to endure. The city being burned, the city being occupied, gives you a sense of how much they wanted freedom. More than 3,000 Patriot POWs are thrown into prison ships in New York Harbor. Notorious is the HMS Jersey, nicknamed Hell. One prisoner, Robert Sheffield, escaped to tell the tale. 
The air was so foul that at times the lamp could not be kept burning, by reason of which the bodies were not missed until they had been dead ten days. Nine in ten prisoners die. There is a memorial over in Brooklyn to those that died on British uh, prison ships in New York Harbor, thousands of Americans. Over the course of the war, 12,000 Patriot POWs will die in the prison ships, three times more than are killed in battle. The loss of New York is Washington's first defeat as commander in chief. The overwhelming British force crushes the rebel army. 